Fight again! No, don't get too... Too close. Mr. Gentlemen, welcome to Colony Ship. The post-Earth rowing playing game. I'm the man today, gentlemen. Well, we're going back to the future. We're going back to the future to get fucked up by some really weird ass shit, man. And we were gonna try to survive. Again, and I really love the music. Holy shit, this thing is good, man. This thing is really good. So basically you're thinking, what, what's the setting over here? Well, it's quite simple. The game takes place on a generation ship launched to Proxima Century. And, well, apparently nightmares have decided to join us on this little trip. And, well, now we're going around. We're gonna have a multiple ways to handle quests. We're gonna have multiple ways to handle, uh, well, upcoming obstacles. And then we will have to face the consequences. I have no damn idea what to expect in this game. Uh, the key has been provided by the developers, and I want to keep uh, you. I want you to keep in mind one thing: this game is currently in early access. There's gonna be a link in the description below that will, well, lead you to the game Steam page. Where also, if you want to try the game yourself and make yourself your own decision if this game is worth your time, there's gonna be a demo version of the game. Something you don't get quite too often nowadays. And well, the developers were very kind to provide such a thing on the Steam page. So let us roll ourselves a new game. And what the hell is this? I look like Asmund God on steroids. So this is a very interesting, uh, I think, character creation build. I think we can try to play something like this. So I'm gonna play myself a lone wolf, and I want to see how far I can actually go, right, with this thing. I've copied this build from the from the Steam page. Uh, there are so some okay. There are some very nice traits over here that I'm kind of considering. Whoa. Second win, on kill, plus six action points. That could be awesome. Berserker, Gladiator, Precision Strikes, Basher. Okay, so you can both make a reliable, apparently, melee combatant, and you can also try to make a lone wolf. You can also try to make, I believe, a sniper rifle guy, an intelligent sniper, something I play most of the times when it comes to Fallout games. I, I've i played through Fallout 2, the best Fallout, uh, and Fallout New Vegas. And I think Fallout 3 as well, as a basically uh, walking, talking sniper rifle guy. And it worked perfectly, man. And I think I'm gonna actually try to do something similar over here. But then again, I'm gonna go with shotguns for the time being. And I want to go, I think, alone. I, I want to give it a try as a lone wolf. Evasion plus 10, reaction plus 15, initiative plus 15, critical strike chance plus 5% when working alone. This, this could be really, really powerful. Right, so this is my build if you want to copy it and, well, I have no idea why. It is the year of our lord, <laughs> 2754. You will never feel the sun morph under the blue sky. Never heard of the wind of the bench of trees and never swim in the ocean. Because you had the most fortune to be born on the ship. You have never seen earth and you will never see Proxima Centauri either. Your past and future both sacrifices by some dim and nameless ancestor to the great good of the mission. Starfarer, they call her. A pretty name for a retrofitted implant planetary fighter. She had already been 20 years in service when she was rehistionized. <laughs> Wait, is this supposed to be some type of a space crusade? It's showing every minute of it. No one is set in the ship who actually reached its destination and nobody much cares. Since no one... Alive now will leave to see it. Fatalism is the primitive philosophy of the shipborn. Make the best life you can and consign all of your what ifs and might have beens to the void. Answer a few questions to define your character's beliefs and opinions while learning more about the ship. The ship was launched by a neo Christian. <laughs> hey, okay, this is a fucking space to create. Oh my god, I'm I'm a part of a space crusade. Unbelievable. Decided to establish a religious colony in a distant world. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be a Neo Jesus, why not? The original original fifty thousand passengers, the so called first generation, were truly believers in the mission. They sacrificed whatever lives they had on Earth and demanded strict obedience to the laws of God and the ship from their children. Unfortunately, the generations that followed lacked their forebearers' fervent will to sacrifices. This satisfaction led to open revolt against the authorities called the immunity. And the immunity 
materialize it into a civil wall. While the mutineers, that a decisive blow to the old order, they did not eradicate it completely. When the first died and the smokes finally disappeared, three fractions emerged from the wreckage of the old order, the protectors of the mission, the brotherhood of liberty and the church of the elect. Each of them promising their own versions of the future. You always thought that rebellion against the ship authority was a mistake, uh, the mutineers did the right thing. If they would deny it, the mutineers were fulfilling God's will when they toppled the old order. All shipborn bent God's will, just as all events proceed according to his plan. Who cares? We've got enough problems right now without fighting over the history. A bunch of fanatics. Uh, okay, let's go with the space crusade. Order is always preferable to chaos. Yeah, let's go with that one. In fact, you should go uh, on to say. How could anyone presume to know better than the Founding Fathers? What was good for them should have been good enough for everyone. The ship is a special case, which calls for strict measures. The laws established for everyone's safety may have seemed harsh, but they kept us alive and relatively proper for centuries. The authorities were wrong. They should have accepted the need for change, so that it could happen peacefully and gradually. But waging war within the coffins of the ship was pure Madness. Yeah, okay, that's four, four fathers, why not? The ship suffered extensive damage during the Civil War, but remains operational. The hull was the bridge in several places, and frantic efforts to avoid a meltdown crippled the main reactor. Radiation increased in places to lethal levels, and several areas remain dangerous to this day. When a small percentage of the children in the habitat were fir first born deformed, they were branded mutants and immediately shunned. The young were abundant and those whose defects didn't manifest until later were driven out. With the condition of the fusion reactor degrading onto dangerous levels and the numbers of volunteers for job in Iraq exposed to radiation as the main few, the mutants negotiated a pact with the Covenant, granting them protection from harassment and violence in exchange for the maintenance of the engines and other vital ship systems. We always thought that the mutants are an abomination in the sight of God. We should have eliminated the twisted kind when we had the chance. <laughs> the mutants prove themselves useful by taking care of the actor. Who's better to be exposed to radiation than those already affected by it? We are all God's children, even those who we bit fingers or deformed faces. Are you so beautiful you can shun them? In saving the ship, they saved the world as we know it. That debit can never be repaid. In anything, we need to embrace the possibility of mutations as critical to our survival in this strange new world. Fellow humans, okay, uh, yeah, let's go with this one, I guess. I don't know. The place you call home is now known as the Pit, and to some more effectively as the Free City. Calling the towers of containers rising from the depths of the cargo hold a city is a bit of a stretch, and so is the other half of it. With no kind of lack of government, freedom mostly means you are free to kill or be killed. On the plus side, housing is cheap and keeping overhead low is a priority when you have nothing. In the real city, a metropolis spawning across many decks is called the habitat. It offers much better living conditions for those who can afford it, but to live there you have to pick a side among the factions yearning for control. Nobody in the pit gives a damn about their struggles, but like air before it, nothing in the world is free. Just keep in mind, you might get more than you sign up for. As far as you're concerned, true freedom means being free from the laws passed down by your, uh, by your supposed betters. Some kind of rules are necessary, or else we descend into anarchy. If freedom means living in an interplanetary ship contain container and sleeping with a gun under your pillow, those pit dwellers can keep it. Personal freedom is a luxury the shipborn cannot afford. To serve the state, it is to serve your brother, to serve your sister, and to serve yourself. Why can't people understand that? Yeah, let's go with this one. Yeah, that's a good one. The ship is en route to Proxima B, an Earth-like planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. After launch, a deep space probe transmitted high detailed images of the surface, which revealed one minor setback. This very habitable world is already inhabited, since the voyage is estimated to take close to 400 years it is possible that by the time the ship arrives, the colonists will encounter a mature civilization corresponding to Eros' late Middle Ages. <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you don't take fast enough in civilization, right? What setback? 
Slaves will provide an excellent resources for the colony. Hell yeah! Uh, something. The Church of Elect uh, rejected both the protectors of the mission and the Brotherhood of the Light as warlordly fools, distracted by the politics of their own egos. Teaching their particular uh, the shames, yada yada. When the ship arrives at the destination, Judgment Day awaits every citizen. The righteousness will be led home into the pr uh, promised land of Proxima B, while the unprepared will be returned to the hell from which we fed Earth to suffer for all eternity. Religion is the opium for the people. It doesn't matter if God exists. People need to believe it's something bigger than themselves. Yeah! The Protector's one true truth is the mission. And the sole way to ensure successful completion of the mission is to follow the old ways. The ways of the fathers, forefathers and founding fathers are together the beam upon which the ship travels to the ultimate destination. The immunity which through the sad face and timely intervention was thankfully aborted uh, was the ultimate betrayal of the old ways, for of everyone who had come before, the nullification of every sacrifice and every life decided to the mission. Sworn to regain control of the ship, the protectors will subject anyone who threatens the mission. Over the last century, they have managed to expand and enslave somewhat, but the Brotherhood is deeply entrenched. To overcome them with violence would result in a massive loss of life, and unfortunate consequences which in itself would endanger the mission. The protectors should have be more flexible uh, if they went to attract more people to the cause. Yeah. Brotherhood was formed in the liberated people from the shackles of the ship authority. Their first sadly which of followers of the old way called community did not complete achieve the aim. Uh yada yada yada. Okay. To survive we must evolve and the Brotherhood is merely an agent of change that drives the evolution. Yeah. Your beliefs and opinions may change and evolve over the course of the game as you interact with fractions, groups, and various individuals. Keep in mind that actions speak much louder than words, and that saying one thing and doing another won't fool people for long. Begin your adventure. I like it so far! I really like it so far! Th this is gonna be cool! This is gonna be really... Really fucking cool. Dip it. Ever since you were a kid, this has been your home. A sprawling heap of vacant cargo containers slowly getting filled up with those who couldn't afford to stay in the habitat or needed to get away from the bosses and his factions. Out here, folk have lived free and died fast, with those who survived earning their keep by either diving, diving into the wreckage of the mission control and bringing back valuable relics of the past, or figuring a way to make money of the fools who do the diving. Diving. From the day is sprawling. Uh, okay. The de facto mayor of the town with no government. Jonas Hall's court of the promised land, the pit's only brothel, and the base of operations for his network of fox and horse. But as the pit grows, Jonas' seat uh, at the top has gotten sh shakier. When the Brotherhood of Freedom threatened to annex the town, concerned citizens banded together and hired the re regulators, a mercenary gang led by Jeremiah Braxton, to keep the Brotherhoods out. But now, as Braxton's gunmen swung under the neon lights, some folk have started wondering whatever it's time for the pit to get a little law and order, and whatever Braxton might be the right man to wear a sheriff's star. You open your eyes to a grey hole metal and ceiling. I got 1000 credits! Yay! One panel of which flickers yellow, indicating day shift. The overslept, not that it matters, with a grunt you roll off your standard mattress and open the window. Let some <laughs> fresh air in. Like everything else around here, fresh is relative. The ship does its best to recycle air and water, but cargo holds aren't high on the priority list. You breathe in metal and burning oil and look up. Four of the bridge's six project pro projectors are still operational, shining dull down the container towers of the cargo hold free, but are known as the pit, the free city. Calling the Pitta City is a bit of a stretch, but it's also calling the reddish brown liquid water. You read that water is supposed to be clean and cities are supposed to be big, but no ship born has ever seen either. Maybe in another hundred years, water will look like taste like water will look and taste like oil, and people will be talking about the good old days when it was the color of rust and tasted refreshingly bitter and tangry. That's the kind of optimism that keeps you going. The elevator claws up and growth to the cargo holds well like a black steel. Block. That's worn a path traveling to the bridge. Okay. 
the uh, for the past few years, you've been doing odd jobs for Tanner, a local hustler with a nose for making money. He never tried to screw you over, which is pretty close to being a virtuous to the town. Still, that's the first time for everything. Whiskey Jack is added on the map. Meet Tanner at a nearby bar called Whiskey Jack. Don't forget your gun. You never want, okay, rusty pipe pistol, crude bolt action pipe rifle, makeshift shotgun, study shot machine gun. Uh, let's go with the shotgun. A backup weapon, perhaps, if you're out of bullets. Utility bar, a cap knife. Hell yeah! Armored and dangerous. Oh my god, that shocked the gun. What the fuck is this thing? Rust? Okay. Right. So, I move with this thing. Okay, I move with that thing. Can I open something over here? Where are my belongings? How much things I own? Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Okay, well, it's pretty big. I have to give it that. I'm guessing this is the generator. Probably it's gonna blow up in the course of the game. Okay, well, I got a nice little cabin over here, I have to admit. So, open up the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, of course, I live in a container. What a surprise. Right, can I close this thing? Doorway is blocked. I The doorway is blocked. I am... Tr what, what do you mean it's blocked? Okay, that was scary. Okay, I can open this one, but I cannot open the next one. Can I do something over here? Hello! Oh! Lockpick 2. Open it. You failed to pick up the lock. Really? Oh, come on! Ah, That's bullshit. I could open it. You know, with safes coming, I guess. Okay, can I... Hello, citizen! How are you? Another day, eh? Says Xavier, raising a cup of the black blend of chemicals that uh, has passed for the coffee board the ship for at least the generation. Looks like it. Any big plans? I get a job on a diving crew, says Xavier, taking another ship. Sip. They lost two men last week, so they hired me on the spot. Must be my lucky day. Diving? As in the diving into the mission control ruins. It's like a maze down there. Sealed doors, containers, entire decks. They cut the power to kill the auto defenses, which they didn't make things easier. Now there's a damn demand for divers who can open door the old-fashioned way. Sounds useful. Can you show me the basics? Sure, if you can pay me for the time. How about 2,200 credits per lesson? Trust me, it will make you money back with no time. For now, let's forget about it, because I don't know what exactly I'm gonna need. But okay, he's, he's a trainer. Good to know. What about this handsome bastard? I'm done with this fucking town, says Charlie, his eyes empty and lifeless. Two years have been there, and I do not... And what do I have to show it? Nothing! What you gonna go? What you gonna do? Go back to the habitat? Guess so. It doesn't seem so bad now. The habitat. Doesn't know what it was, I'm thinking. Take care. I wish you good luck, man. I honestly wish you good luck. I can open this thing. That was probably a mistake. A couple of local junkies are loitering near the entrance to the alley, probably waiting for the next victim. Not worth it. Not yet. Just allow me to get some experience points and then we're gonna see can I actually headshot you guys to... Well, <laughs> back to hell, I guess. Captain, This way. Okay. I don't think I want to go over there. Church of the Elect. Med Bay. Okay, let's go to the bar, I guess. Somewhere over here, and I'm supposed to meet with some. I'm guessing this guy. You look handsome! Tanner. I've got a job for you, says Tanner. Got drink for the drink. Interested? Sure. Easy one. Tanner pulls a plastic uh, lentacle from the compartment inside his sleeves and slides towards you. The guard is old and worn. The color has long faded, but the rise and print of the front is still as clear as the day it was stamped. A2. That's armory level, too. The holy grail of every scavenger on the ship. During the immunity, the lo rebels loaded every depot on the first level, but the automated defenses on the second stopped them dead. Literally. Those, seems, those same turrets have been discarded, uh, dis dishoused every scavenger since. Is this real? 
Is it real? Repeats Tyler, mimicking look of the belief. Son, if you don't have the stones for it, just say so. Don't insult me. Every scarf worth his salt has been searching for this car for decades. Was you the one who found it? I have my ways, Tyler smiles. And if you stayed on uneven teeth, you see. I wasn't looking for a long lost access card since I'm, a, I'm not a fool. I was looking for technical officer's Alicia's Coltion. Tanner pauses. S uh, so you can show your admiration for his savvy. Let me guess, he had the card and you alone figured it out. Not quite. I alone figured out how to find a man who changed his identity and died in the ob obscurity nearly a hundred years ago. I have a feeling you're dying to tell me. Tanner pulls a battered engine pistol from his belt bank and passes it to you. <laughs> this is a sidearm. He changed his name, but he couldn't change the serial number on his gun. Once I found out the serial number, the rest was easy. His granddaughter sold the pistol 20 years ago. Are you sure the cargo still works? Card still works? Are we going to find out? Go see for yourself. When you come back, we have a proper conversation. Why me? I can't do it alone, I don't trust anyone else. Keep the pistol, consider it as an investment into our enterprise. I feel safe already! Do you have any idea what might be there? Whatever it is, it will be worth you a lot of money. We hold out for the right buyer and we'll live like kings for the rest of our days. Okay, talk to Evans. I don't think I want to. Right, so where the hell is Evans? No, this is a serious question. Where the hell is Evans, man? Autogate is added to your map. Armor is added to your map. Ape store is added to your map. Wait, what? Quests. How can I access quests over here? Hello? Great. The weapon that he gave me is a damage energy pistol. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, great. Awesome. No, I can use it. I don't think I have ammunition for that thing, though. Okay. I don't have ammo for that bad boy. Do I have ammo for this thing, though? I, I got one bullet. Wait, hold a second. No, that's a credit stick. How... How I'm supposed to, like, get the energy ammo, huh? Hold a second, where are the quests? Hmm... Here. Oh, that's nice. Main Street map. Campton map. Alright. Ape store. Oh! It's a fast shovel tool! That's awesome! Apes are added to your map. Okay, let's go inside! Hello! Let me guess, you are probably the guy I need to speak to. No, that's Ape. Welcome to Ape, says Ape. His face distorted by the permanent smile. Everything is on sale on this very special day! You don't say. Steal, help yourself for some ammo. I got steal one. I'm not gonna try. Not for now. Who the fuck are you? Evans. There you go. Being a gunfire is a quite an easy way to make a living in the pit. All it takes is a gun and some guts. It's also a quick and easy way to win up death. But the kind of men driven to the gun always think they're going to live forever. Evans learned the reliance of his new trade the hard way. The first time Evans got lucky and killed the man as he fumbled with his wrath, riding that high, Evans called out an old hand who put three bullets in his chest and left him for dead. Lucky for Evans, a stranger patched him up and he survived. But today he looks like a man whose luck just has just about run out. What brings you to those parts? He asked, his bolt action rifle still pointed your way. I have a job for you. A job? Evans pretends to think about it for a moment. Truth to be told, I've got a job for you too. All we gotta do is stick around and watch my back while I'll deal with those talks. <laughs> do you you do that for me and I do whatever you need. No questions asked. Deal? What fox? Do not send some guns talks to harass Ape. He knows that this uh, store keep. Ape here wants to deregulate it, but Braxton said he can't spare any men. You and I both know the bastard doesn't wanna get involved, so Ape hired me to watch the store, but the Southern bitch didn't say a word about Jonas until I agreed. I'm not a coward, but I don't want to go against Jonas alone. He runs this town, for Christ's sake. Wait and see what trespasses. Why did Abe go to the regulators? Beats me. We all agreed that higher regulators when the Brotherhood started eyeing the pit and getting ideas. Only reason they're still around now that the Brotherhood is backed off is to make sure they don't come back. At any rate, the job is to show 
that we have some muscle, even if it's a hired muscle. Not s sort out local trouble. Okay. What uh, what does Jonas want from Ape? Money? What else? His folks say to everyone who doesn't business in the pit has to pay taxes or pick up and go. I told Ape he should pay, but he doesn't want to listen to reasons. If he wants to die, that's his business. But now, I'm gonna go down there. Go down with him. Sure, let's give it a try, why not? The gun fox show up around the noon. A man in his 40s who moved with slow confidence and a brush young man eager to get himself killed. You got Jonas money? Demands the kid talking tough. Oh, sorry, the kid. The other man stays quiet, keeping his eye on you and Jonas. Initiative, plus 10. <laughs> what money? What money? You deaf? Ask the kid, spotting on the floor. Jonas money! He owes the pit! It's now about time you fucking freeload and started paying a fair share! It doesn't have to end to go this way. Which way is, was that? Oh, which... <laughs> and which way is that? Asked the old man softly. You can see he's been count, counting heads and running odds while the kids have been talking. Leaving the store in the body bag. Might not be me, says the old man smiling. It's not a good... It's not a good smile. Are you willing to bet your life on it? On what might or might not happen? That's one hell of a gamble, friend. Oh! Okay, I can actually try to persuade him. You saying we leave empty-handed? Scoffs the older man. You have a feeling he wants to find out. Apparently, the kid gets out the same impression. What are you talking about? Asks the kid. It's two against two! Hell! I could kill both of you myself! Well, if you think so. Persuasion. And then what? Getting indexing is one thing, killing folks over is another. You cross the line and end up dead sooner than you think. It's three against two. Apes allows a shot, but even he can miss at the range. <laughs> he can't miss at the range. Not with that hand cannon he's carrying. Shut up! Oh, great. There you go. And I got a penalty for the initiative. Okay. Right, time to some fucking combat. I got the shotgun, so sure, why not? I, okay, this is a active skill or this is an item? I don't think I want to use the items for nowadays. Okay, probably hiding around here would be a good idea, right? Ah, fuck it, let's shoot him in the face. Can I go behind this cover? No, I can't. Since I cannot go behind cover? Okay, whatever. Fire! I said fire! How'd I fire? I don't know. Hello? Oh, regular shot. Aim, head, reload. Okay, aim for the chest, I guess. Fire! How do I fire? <laughs> fire, goddammit! I've ended up my turn. Or did I? I don't think so. Oh! I've missed. Good job! You have no ammunition. Really? Reload. Okay, ah, there's my action points. Okay. Right, aim shot once again. There you go, 13. Do I have to reload again? Yes, I have. Reload. <laughs> fire again! No, don't get too... Too close. That was a mistake. Okay, go back. Oh, great. He's he's carrying a sniper rifle. Awesome, awesome. Very cool. Uh, right, so how about you're gonna try to go away? Let me guess. You're gonna probably get shot if you're gonna move, right? No, you didn't. Okay, that's nice. So try to shoot this guy, like, normally. Gazed. One shot, so, honestly. One shot, cannon. Uh, okay, takes seven action points to shoot this bad boy. Hide. All right, whatever. Uh, end the turn. Hello, Gaze. Focus going around. Close combat. Haha, <laughs> you've missed. Ape, no! Look out, ape! This guy's going somewhere. Ow! My kidney! This is the hardest working kidney in the entire fucking ship! Alright. You go here. Oh! Oh, so now it works. Okay. Right, so I want you to... Okay, it's reloaded. Fire upon his... Okay, just a regular shot. Fire! Nice shot. Reload. Fire. You've... How did you have missed? Okay, time for you. Shoot at his face. Good. Reload. Fire! Nice. And that's actually about it. Reaction attack. 
Ow. I'm gonna probably die. Close combat. One damage. You serious? Ah! Uh, what was that? Okay. Whatever this one is. Time to use it, boys. I'm regenerating hit points. Awesome. Now, reload. And fire. One down. I repeat. One down. Now hide. And I died. Good job. <laughs> yeah, adventure ends before it begins. Shit. All right, now this time let's actually just attack them right away, okay? See how this thing's gonna go. All right, I got my trusty shotgun. Uh, maybe I should actually try to... Can I go... Oh, oh, this is placement. Oh, okay. Right. That's how it goes. Okay, start the combat. Right. Sorry about that, guys. Now time to die. No. I've ordered you to shoot, not to fucking move closer. Uh, never mind. Yeah, guys, you could actually do some more damage if you actually followed protocols, you know, you moron. Okay, fire up on this face. Nice shot. Reload. Fire up. On no, fire. Good. And that's actually it. You cannot do more. Time to die. Ow. Don't shoot me. Hey, I survived. All right. Now, time to roll my trusty shot shotgun. Fire. Good shot. Reload. Fire. Yay, one down. Two to fucking go, I guess. Uh, get over here. We need to get closer to personal, as I say. Uh, okay, reload you. Fire. Nice shot, 11. Reload. Fire. Fire. Fi I cannot fire. Not enough points. Shit. And end the turn. Haha, <laughs> you've missed! What a bitch! Ow! You're gonna pay for that thing, you know? I'm gonna murder you! You'll be surprised how well I'm good at murdering! Fire! Nice shot, 6 points. Reload. Fire! 10 points, have some, have some. Good job, good job, Neo. Yeah, thank you, no problem. Uh, okay, end the turn. Well, no need to reload. Fire! Nice, and... Goodbye! Fuck! Seriously? S seriously? Wow! Reaction attack. Okay, time to finish you off, boy. Nighty night. Easy mode. I... I did it. <laughs> what do you know now? Ask Evan. Visibly shaken. We have to see it through, I suppose. Nothing. Why make someone else's problems our own? Yeah, that's the truth. It's your call, says Evans. I reckon I'll stick with you until this thing blows over. Welcome aboard. I think I'll be better off on my own. Well, I still owe you, so if you change your mind, you know where to find me. And I'm just gonna do some loading around here. What do you got? A Gatling gun. A fucking Gatling gun. Are you serious? What the fuck, man? A Gatling gun? What? What? Okay, what's the other corpse? Right, what do you got, sweetheart? Oh, okay. Smart glasses. I can work with this. Sure, why not? Inventory. Let's see. Vest. Uh, armor type chest. One and one. Okay, this thing. Uh, okay, I think this one is worse. So that's great. That's awesome. Protective sleeves. I don't think I got anything like that. Hell, I look like a cyborg already. Okay, combat knife, already got one. Smart goggles, glasses, goggles. Okay, Google, I hope you won't mind. Uh, hello, I'm trying to equip this thing. Thank you. And the best part about this is that this Gatling gun counts as a shotgun. Well, 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 well. <laughs> ah, crap, there's a welcoming party outside. I have a bad feeling about this. Braxton. Rumor has it Captain Braxton once served for higher power that in the days before the crisis of faith he was known as faithful gunner Jeremiah Braxton, among the church of the elect. There's plenty of talk about why he left, but as often as the case, no story is more compelling than the others. Backing up by a few like-minded men and picking up more recruits along the way, Braxton left the church and 
wandered up in the pit, where the good fighting men are always in high demand. Around the same time, the Brotherhood has started noising around, eager to establish a foothold here. Braxton and his regulators offered the good people of the pit their service. After much debate, they were hired to drive the Brotherhood's men out, which was accomplished with brutal efficiency. Thank God you're alive, says Braxton, holstering his gun. When I had the gunfire, I assumed the wars. I thought you didn't want to get involved. It's not my fight, says Braxton, but someone has to step in and protect those people. I have nothing against Jonas, but this time he's gone too far. What I can do to help? Quite a lot, actually. If we move against Jonas, he'll claim that the regulators are taking over and many would side with him. We don't want that. But you're on one of them. <laughs> if you challenge Jonas, people will side with you. Of course, we'll stand with you, but it will be your fight. I am in. Then Dr. Jonas put him out notice in front of everyone. Let them all hear what you have to say. Why? Won't he know we'll be coming? We aren't going to stab him in the back. Braxton says firmly, a man deserves the right to defend himself. Wait for me. Wait for them to leave. Wow, you're such a honorable man, man. Too bad that I'll have to give up my face to, like, get shot in. Son of a bitch. But we're gonna see how this week is gonna go, ladies and gentlemen, in the future episodes. If you want to try the game yourself, the link's gonna be in the description below. As always, so go ahead, give it a try. Remember about the demo version, and, well, I will see where this thing will take us. So far, I like it. Uh, I like the scenery, I like the theme, and, well, I'm just curious what exactly we're gonna find out in the end. But for now, though, as I said, I'm gonna do this thing. As of you, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, like, and subscribe, so a lot. I'll see you all in the next video.